Hi everyone, my name is Matt. I'm a driver in training in Manitoba, and you're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs on YouTube. Ain't that right, Zoe? Good morning everybody. I just delivered uh, lumber. I don't need this vest on anymore. Put that back there. And we're on our way down to Adel, Iowa. We're here in Bemidji, Minnesota. We've got some freight to pick up down there and that freight is taking us into Eastern Saskatchewan. I have an empty 53 foot step deck behind me. Just got my tarps on the front there. You can see it in the mirror. I'm gonna close my windows. My engine fan likes to kick up a lot of dust. I like to leave as much of that outside as possible. crossed into the US at International Falls, Minnesota from Fort Francis, Ontario. And it's been a smooth sailing trip down, knock on wood. Hopefully it stays that way. My mission for this whole week was to get this load offloaded today, which I did. So now the rest of the week should fall into place just nicely pick up this load tomorrow in Iowa and we'll deliver it Thursday or Friday Thursday afternoon or Friday morning in Saskatchewan <coughs> and then we'll see they'll probably uh, point us towards home from there gotta find a good truck stop to stop at I've been sort of go 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 all day already like to take a little bit of a break grab a coffee and stuff something to eat all right how nice am I how nice am I today way too nice like usual I could have gone could have gone most people would have gone I think most people would have gone gotta wait for these guys because I'll need the whole road to get on there with my trailer and wait for this one there's another one coming now I'm not gonna be that nice. I'm not that nice. There is a limit to my niceness. Right turn only, all traffic must turn right. Okay. Well, we're going that way. Looks like there's a U-turn right there that's set up for us. Huh. There's a weird way of doing this, eh? Here's the U-turn. I guess this is safer than Oh, it is actually better for the trucks this way. This way you have a, a turning lane, you're out of the way of traffic. Yeah, I get it. I get why they did this. A little bit of a roundabout way of doing things, but... Let's go get our 
free. Saskatchewan free. That's a big dude. Akeley, is that how you pronounce it? Akeley, Akeley? Akeley, Minnesota. I love to see small towns and how they embrace their history. You know, you see it more and more in the big cities where they do the opposite, where they try to revise or erase history or try to make you feel ashamed of it. Maybe that's why I like small towns. I'm from a small town up in Canada myself, up in Manitoba, just north of here. And uh, that's sort of the way it is in small towns. And this is Paul Bunyan, I think. I guess you're supposed to sit on his hand there and take a picture. I'm not sitting on your hand, bud. Oh, even that, that, that mustache, I don't trust that mustache, man. Glorious beard, though. Yeah, there's our little park that they got here. I'm parked uh, just over there. Taking a little break here in town. Exploring a little bit. I love, I love small towns. This is where you can get the true feel of the American culture, the American way of life, in my opinion. At least that's how I feel about Canada. If you really want to get the essence of a region or the, the real, like, what would you call it? The real feel of what it is, you know, to be, you know, American or Canadian. You go to a small town, you talk to the people there. They usually got it right. Not to say anything is wrong with living in a city. It's just interesting how I've grown older and I've really realized that the thinking patterns and just the thinking in general is very different between someone who grew up in a small town and someone who grew up in a big city. I'm generalizing here. Not all, obviously. I can relate to people from small towns. Look at this. Well, that's nice. Would you look at that? Beautiful. I think what I'm getting at is that small town, rural communities move at a slower pace. There's also more accountability to your actions because when you grow up in a small town, word gets around fast. If you do something dumb, the whole town's gonna know you did something dumb. And in order to keep a good reputation, you have to be on your toes all the time, making sure that you don't do anything dumb because if you do, everybody's gonna know. You can't just, you know, melt away into the crowd or just blend into the crowd. It's a... Uh, very different in that way. I know in a big city, you know, you do something dumb and, you know, you can disappear. Not in a small town. Everyone and your grandma's gonna know by dinner time what you did. And they're gonna remember it too. And then you might not be trusted as much after that, depending on what it was. If you wreck your reputation in a small town, you gotta earn it back. Whereas in a city, you can just literally just find a new group of friends and they won't even know. <laughs> and like I was saying before, from what I've noticed, I go to a small town, like I'm, and from where I am too, we're proud of our history, proud of our accomplishments, not claiming to be perfect. We're proud of what we've done to get we, where we are today. We, we live in a wonderful country. And America down here is a beautiful country too. And they should be proud of it. Look how far they've come. You should be really proud of that. I find in small towns, you get that energy. People are excited for the future. And they're excited to share their history with you as well. They know where they came from. They know where they're going. Out here, 
what happened 100 years ago still matters very much. And hopefully the next 100 years will be even better. I mean, those are just my observations. Um, so this is their museum here, visitor information. This little outdoor area here for some parties. Some hoedowns, maybe? All right, Mr. Bunyan. It's been nice meeting you. You take care, all right? I'll see you next time. I learned of the I learned the stories of Paul Bunyan in school. I don't remember them all right now, but he's a must be a big figure around this area because every town I go through has something to do with Paul Bunyan and Paul Bunyan stuff here. Paul Bunyan. He was like a, a lumberjack, right? Obviously, it looks like one. Must have been a key figure in Minnesota history. make it down to Albert Lee, Minnesota, pretty much at the border with Iowa, very close to it. here to Interstate 94. the interstate i-94 will take us east towards the cities the twin cities then we'll take i-494 around the south side to i-35 south which is going to take us down uh towards albert lee and then into iowa tomorrow i'm not sure if i'm going to make it to albert lee yet but i might make it to owatonna
46 minutes left. Highly depends on how the traffic is. It's a yield. Oh, I hate it when they do these yields in construction zones. I got it moving over. Okay. Made it. Okay, bud, time to step on it. You're on the highway now. All right, bud, anytime now. It's the pedal on the right. Oh, if you can't find yours, I can find mine. Oh, of course, once the big truck pulls out to the left, then he finds it every time. Look at this, yeah, every time. It'll take forever to speed up, forever to speed up, and as soon as the big semi decides, okay, now I'm gonna pass. Oh, oh then they find the accelerator. God forbid the semi pass them. God forbid. All right, no one likes being passed by a semi. Sometimes I do that just to snap people out of it. Because if they see a big truck behind them, they're not paying attention to their speed limit or to their speedometer. They don't know, that they don't realize they're going so slow, so I'll pull out into the left lane, act like I'm about to pass. 90% chance that they're gonna look down at the speedometer because the big truck is about to pass, realize they're going slow, and then quickly accelerate before you can get past them. But sometimes I'll just move over and just wait for them to speed up. It, it works almost every time. What's going on here? Oh, okay guys, just because I'm slowing down doesn't mean you slow down. I really wanted to get out of this lane. As soon as I hit the brakes, they hit the brakes right beside me. Traffic, you know? Monkey see, monkey do. Most traffic out here uh, doesn't really pay attention or uh, do their own thing. They'll do whatever everyone else is doing around them. If everyone else is doing 100 miles an hour, they'll probably do 100 miles an hour. If everyone else is doing 45 miles an hour, they're probably gonna do 45 miles an hour. If you slow down, they'll slow down. If you speed up, they'll speed up. It's very annoying. <laughs> But that's the life, eh? That's, that's what we truckers deal with every day. You just sort of get used to it. Like I was saying before, then you just start playing games with them. If they're going slow, you just start acting like you're gonna pass them. Then they speed up. Then you say, thank you very much. And you go back behind them. Thanks for paying attention, eh? Some of us don't get paid by the hour. I'd like to get moving. No, just me? Am I complaining again? Ah, probably. That's ah, what I do. It's what I do. It's what I'm known for, apparently. You like it. You like it. Oh boy, he's complaining again! My favorite! In one mile, we're coming up on what I hope will be the end of our day. Approaching destination on the left side. Coming up to what I hope is the end of my day. I might have to park over here. Yeah, I'm gonna park here and then I'll walk up there see if there's room. If there's not room, then I guess this is, this might work. Just walk up and down here, make sure that there's not any, no parking signs or anything. blue cool down here a little bit. This guy's not pulling over. Where's he gonna stop? Oh, okay, he's going up there. Wow, he went a long ways. I would have I would have stopped for the cop way back there already. I don't know what he's doing going way in there. Some people man. Yeah what I was saying is I'm just letting old blue uh her turbo cool down and everything here. Let her idle for about five, ten minutes just at the end of the day. And then now we're shutting her down for the night. It was a good day today. I'm gonna walk up ahead here to the restrooms in a bit. And also check to see if there's any parking closer to the building. If not, I believe we can park over here. There's no signs here that say no parking and uh, that's often what happens is guys end up parking. 
don't like it because it's kind of it's really tilted i mean at least it's tilted the right way you don't want to be tilted the other way because then all the blood rushes to your head because your head is always on the driver's side right Great River Rust area. So women and men. Doesn't look like I'm going to get a closer parking spot. Everything is pretty full here. There's one spot available, but it's a wheelchair spot or handicap spot. And one truck down at the end over there took up two spots on purpose. So, there's that. Oh well, this will just stay where we're at then. I know that there are drivers out there that use these spots. They are legitimately, uh, they legitimately have the permit for these spots for uh, various reasons. I don't know how common they are though. I've only seen a couple over the past you know, 16 years of me driving. I don't think it's very common, but maybe I just don't notice them. Very often I see trucks parked in these spots without any permit hanging in the front window anymore, and that kind of upsets me a little bit too. I mean, you know, I could probably park there and no one would say anything, but you know, with my luck, as soon as I pull in there, that's when the truck that actually needs the spot would roll in. And then I'd look like that guy parked in a spot where I don't belong it's not me this guy with the John Deere stuff over here took up two spots I didn't like that check this out see this guy's got an oversized load right it's even wider than his and he fit it in one spot he only took up one spot but for whatever reason this guy thinks he needed two. Literally, I guess this actually isn't a parking spot. This is actually a drive-through so that trucks can get through the front here. So it's not a spot. I mean, it could be used as one, I guess. So I don't know, you guys decide. Is this uh, okay? Is that warranted? Look how much space is in there. I could probably fit my truck between those two loads. I could probably fit in there, just barely but I bet you he would not be happy in the morning. And what do I tell him? I'm like, well, you shouldn't have parked like that, man. Oh, let me know what you think in the comment section. Is technically, that's not a spot there, so technically he only took up one spot, but he's also blocking the drive-through for people to get around that way, but they can still go around this way. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to walk away. Let you guys give me your opinions in the comment section. I don't like it. You should only take up one space if, if you have to. And if you got an oversized load, I understand sometimes you need to take up two. But I guess it's a judgment call. And that was his judgment call. Wouldn't have been mine, but that was his. So the main parking area is up there. You got a bunch of us parked down here as well. I might actually come up and park in front of this guy right up here instead. Just so I'm a little further up. Trucks go that way, cars go that way. Here paved a little bit better. That guy's got the same blue interior lights that I have. Anyways guys, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it.